What's going on everybody? It's Afro Think Tank. Today I want to talk about why one of the reasons why African Americans when they come into prominence or when they run into some money or they come into a position of power and resources, why they don't not all of them because some in some cases they do, but why more African Americans don't go back into their their um their old neighborhoods and invest in the community. Why is it that we have all these rich millionaires from all these supposed po poverty-stricken places, yet they don't go back to these places en masse and fix the place up. Because you figure if you have somebody, let's say they're an NBA player, let's say they make, they, they have 30, 40, 50 million dollars, I'm sure you could take a million dollars and do some real good in your neighborhood, right? Now some of them do do that. But here's the problem that, that we have, and we have to talk about it guys, we have to talk about it. The problem that we have, and this also goes with why some Pan-Africans will go to Africa and do stuff there and try to benefit a group of black people there and not so much here off the break. This is just one of the reasons, there's various reasons, but this is just one of the reasons. Is that African Americans in these neighborhoods don't value their neighborhood. They don't value their neighborhood at all. They they have like, there you people equate poorness with poverty, right? So usually in a place, you know, you'll, you'll, in America, if the place is poor, it's crime ridden and and all sorts of degenerate things. Some place you don't want to raise your child, you know, a place where your, your your daughter can't just go outside and play with her friends, or your your, your little son can't go outside and play with their friends because they got you got to worry about somebody getting shot. You got to worry about a, a, a group of of gang members or neighborhood thugs pr preying upon your children. Like these are environments that are not conducive to going and help because the people don't seem to want to help themselves. Like the example, the example that you know that I made, I made before in some of my past videos, is if you go in some of these poor neighborhoods, like in other countries, they're poor, right? Much, much, much poorer than our neighborhoods. But the people are not. the The atmosphere is is safe. The atmosphere is not crime ridden. Meaning, you can be poor and have dignity about yourself. You can have a poor neighborhood that's just really poor in resources, but the people are respectful and they, and they, and they treat their place with respect and they do the best they can with what they got. There's plenty of examples of that overseas in various different countries. And I've experienced it myself. And in America, I don't know what it is about us, but we think that if the, if the neighborhood's poor, then everybody just seems to be criminals. Or, or, or it's just the ratio of criminality versus people who just want to live their life with their meager, uh, meager means. It's just, not, it's just unsustainable. And so if I wanted to invest, if I wanted to invest in my neighborhood and I go build something only for it to be destroyed, shot up, uh, or have a bunch of people come make it so dangerous that no one wants to patronize my business, why would I waste my time? It's a dangerous investment because black people in America, in the poorest parts of our communities, we don't respect our community. We don't uphold our community. We don't protect our community. So if you don't protect your community, if you don't uphold your community, if you don't have any values in your community, and if you, you know, why would anybody invest any money or any time and effort to fix it, right? Now, yes, there are white communities just like that. There are Asian communities just like that. It's not just, it's not just, and it's not just inherent, it's not inherent to, to just black people, okay? But I'm talking about black people because we are black people. What they do is what they do. What we do is what we do, okay? So in order for our communities to be valuable places of investment, it's up to the, the person of that community, the people of that community to make it attractive. You have to make a place attractive for people to wanna come in and do business. You have to make it attractive for people to wanna come in and bring some sort of learning center, some sort of training center. You have to. Because no one's gonna risk their lives for a bunch of black folks that don't care about another black folk. You know, black lives only seem to matter when it's a white or Asian person attacking us, right? But black lives don't seem to matter to other black people who are alive. That's the problem. That's that's what we need to fix. That's the that's the crux of the situation, right? So as a Pan-African, I get this all the time. Why you wanna go to a community why you want to go and African help those people? First of all, those people are my people. That's number one. If you don't see it that way, that's on you. I respect that, okay? You do your, do your thing. 
But those people are my people, right? That's number one. Number two, if I go to Africa, right, and I spend my hard-earned money and I build a school, guess what? The students will appreciate it. If I if I build, like, I'm serious. If I build a school, the students will appreciate it. My school will be packed. The teachers will appreciate it. The students will be happy to go to class on day one. They will go to class on day one, day two, day three. If I buy books for those kids, they will read those books. They will appreciate those books that I purchase. If I buy desks and computers and I do things like that, those people will appreciate it and they will take care of it. They will make sure it lasts because they know what it's like not to have, right? And they appreciate the things that they get. This is just a, this is just a fact. If I build a school in, in the middle of the hood in any black or white neighborhood, any neighborhood in America, if I build a school, kids ain't gonna care about that school. They don't wanna go to school. They ain't trying to, education in the hood? Ain't nobody thinking about no education in the hood. You know, except for some, there's there's a lot that do make it out. Now, right, let me not say that. There's a lot that do make, make it out. But I'm talking the overall feeling, the overall, the overall thing. That why you think Oprah went over there and built the school? What she what did she say? She said because they, they appreciate it. We take things for granted in America. We take a lot of we have it so good in America. You know, with the system that we live in, we take a lot of things for granted. You see, we can go to school for 12 years for free. In a lot of other countries, you gotta pay. You gotta pay. Can you imagine if you had? Imagine in America, if we all had to pay from K to 12. Imagine that. How many kids would actually be going to school? How much more struggling would you be struggling because you have to pay all your bills and pay school fees, on top of books, on top of everything else, right? That's something you ain't got to worry about because you get. We get 12. We have an option to have 12 years of schooling for free. Is it crap education? Yeah, but at least teaches how to count, teaches how to read. Teach us how to comprehend. You can learn some stuff in there. You know, at least we get that. So we take it for granted. We think it's a given. We think every place is like that, right? 12th grade, right? You only got to pay for college, right? That's what we think. But that's not how it is. Overseas, you got to pay for every semester of every year of school, just like college. From kindergarten all the way up, you're paying the whole way. All right? So if you are living in an environment where education costs, you're going to appreciate anything that you get. And when people are are taking philanthropist action or people are spending their hard-earned money trying to help people the payment they want to receive is appreciation appreciation is the energy and the juice and the gas that keeps people going continuing to do the same thing if i put some if i build a ymca in or, or some sort of recreational computer center in the hood right because i want to give the less fortunate kids access to internet and I want to give them educational material and have have them have something to do other than hang outside and potentially get, you know, killed by a straight bullet. If I build something like that, what's going to happen? A couple months down the line, little cliques and gangs gonna 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 start congregating around the area. They're gonna make it a hostile environment. They're gonna destroy my computers. They're gonna destroy and start stealing shit. They're gonna disrespect. They're gonna paint up the wall. They're gonna ruin it because that's just what they do. That's just what American people kids do, right? Because of the the way the government makes us, the government controls how we raise our children, and now our children are, are, are growing up with no respect for adults. They have no respect, none, no respect for elders, no respect for law, no respect for authority. They have no respect. So why does anybody want to invest into a uh, 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 something like that when you can invest into another group of black people who will appreciate the things that you do, who would 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 bring who, who it's like an investment so when you do something like that you know you create you know people when you give them access to technology you give them access to resources then they're able to empower themselves and do other things and then pay it forward right to other people and then it sprouts like a tree you plant a seed and it grows in various different branches why would i want to plant a seed in 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 a ground that's that's not uh fertile why would i want to plant a seed in a place that is not conducive for growth why would I want to do that? I would that seed would never become a forest. If I plant it somewhere, it's never gonna grow. But if I plant a seed somewhere where it's gonna grow and I, I got my own forest, then at that point when I got my own forest, then I can afford to plant whole trees, not just seeds, whole trees in neighborhoods, African American neighborhoods, right? To the point where they can't be destroyed. It's already grown, the roots are set. That's what it's all about. And that's why a lot of people don't invest. And you can't even go back to the hood once you make money, once they find out. Because people always want you to make it, making it, rooting you on. But when you get there, all of a sudden, 
you're oh you're a traitor you're this and that but then when you go back to the hood look at like Nipsey Hussle Nipsey Hussle had the audacity to stay in his hood and try to do something good and what happened he get murdered by his own people who wants to get murdered trying to help their own people nobody I don't want to get murdered trying to help my own people that's crazy right so and look at 50 cent what did he say a long time ago why you ain't still in the hood he said the whole point is to get out the hood the whole point is to get out the hood to get out of the situation right that's the whole point is to get out of that place out of that situation out of that environment right because that environment is not conducive for growth for education for learning anything because everybody's on fight or flight every day you step out your house you got to look left and right to see you know somebody walking behind you is somebody gonna snatch your purse is your is it okay for your grandma to walk down to the store you know at seven o'clock in the afternoon is it okay for your kids to play outside is it okay for you to go to work come back at night at work and got worry about getting off the bus and get mugged you know what I'm saying like things like that and you can't blame anybody for not wanting to invest in communities like that you know and yes uh, the communities are like that because the gut the, 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 the um the system doesn't give us funding but the reason why the system doesn't get us funding is because we the people do not vote or participate in local elections and we never vote in the people that have our best interests at hand so all of this stuff has to do with the, a lack of our accountability on the local political level period we allow people to come into our neighborhoods uh, to, to be in charge of us right to police us who have no interest in our well-being in our or our communities where being and we wonder why nothing ever happens right and then every four years we go vote for the president who ain't got no real power he ain't nothing but a figurehead when all the real power is in your local elections in your local um council member seats in your local municipalities that's where the power is but we don't care about that we don't even pay attention to that but then wonder why our neighborhoods look the way they, they are wonder why we don't have the resources to to fix our neighborhoods so if the local population of the area doesn't care enough to vote in and hold their local politicians and police forces accountable, then why should any one individual with that run, that ran into some money or worked really hard to 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 build uh, wealth invest in these same communities when the people are not even trying to invest in it? You know why? You know you can't. You know like what they say, you can lead a you can lead a fish, you can leave a horse to water, but you can't make him drink it, right? Right? We can't force you guys to drink it. We can lead you there. We can't force you. So that's one of the main reasons why you don't see rich African Americans or rich anybody doing too much investing in the hood. You may see, I mean, some stuff every now and then, but you know, nothing on any scale, which if we were to do it, we can completely change our situation. But we got to change our mindset. We got to change our culture. We have to eliminate the things in our culture that causes us to. It causes us to uh, be in this position, some of us, because a lot of us are in the middle class. 40% uh, of African Americans are in the middle class. We're doing pretty good. We're talking about the other part, the other portion, all right? The other portion, because not all African Americans are sitting in dilapidated ghettos, okay? Not all. We're actually doing quite well, actually, to be honest. Despite everything, we're doing quite well as a group of people, right? But we could be doing so much better, right? And so we have to find a way to give the people in these hoods opportunities to get out. Not so much setting up in these neighborhoods because we can always build another neighborhood. We can always take over an, another place. You don't, you don't, you're not married to one geographical location. You know, so the best thing a Pan African can do, the best thing uh, a black philanthropist can do is create conditions and environments to give people who want to pull themselves out of their situation the opportunity. That's it. Opportunity. We can't, it's not charity, it's opportunity via capitalism. Right, because that is the vehicle in which we use in this modern day time to get ahead. Capitalism, right? So we have to do that. So if I, if I'm reaching down with my hand, I'm reaching my, down with my hand to lift somebody up, but they're using their feet to pull themselves up. If I reach down to lift somebody up and they're just giving me all dead weight, I'm going to drop them because it's a waste of my energy and I'm not doing it for them. You understand what I'm saying? So that's all I really want. Say, think about that. Tell me, guys, what you think in the comment section. This Afro Think Tank. Learn some. Teach them. I'm out.